Peace. This is a meat and potato sorcery production starring myself, the Water Alchemist, and today's topic for the occult family is the occult origins of Sherlock Holmes. For many of you that know your fiction or your fictional book lore, everybody knows that Sherlock Holmes is the so-called greatest detective that never existed. And he was a creation from Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. So we can't understand a lot of things about the greatest detective without understanding about the author himself. Now, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was born in Edinburgh in the United Kingdom in 1859. So that's the standard stuff. Let's get to the occult lore. His father was committed to an insane asylum. Now, why? Because his father had an occult gene in him because his father was an artisan. But he used to have visions very young. He didn't know how to handle those visions. And I will take it one step further. His brother or Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's uncle, Richard, encountered the fairy kingdom with gnomes, sprites, and other people from that realm. And used to write about it in detail in his journal as well as depict them. Now, needless to say, you know, when you're young, every man or woman wants to carve out a path that speaks to their own authenticity. This was no different even back then in the so-called early 19th century. So Arthur Conan Doyle ended up going to medical school and he graduated and he left something that was uh, very peculiar for that time when he got his diploma and said license to kill which influenced another person, Ian Fleming, who created what? James Bond, 007. But that's a other no topic of discussion. But needless to say is that that occult gene was passed on to Sir Arthur. And he was trying to reconcile these truths. So he got away from medical school because his practice wasn't doing that good anyway. And he was writing short stories and he was seeking things. He had joined the Freemasons in 1887, but he, leave, he left in 1889. Like, in other words, wow, not a whole lot to see here. So he ended up leaving because he was trained, even though he walked away as an agnostic. Sir Arthur was trained as a Jesuit. That's right. And if you know anything about the Jesuits, nobody has more on occult doctrine, particularly Egyptian magic, than the Vatican. This is a fact. So he ended up becoming a part of the Theosophical Society, and he did some things there, but this is when he really hit his mark, when he joined the Order of the Golden Dawn in 1898, and they also had author Bram Stoker, who was responsible for Dracula. But basically, he was always seeking occult truth and he was struggling. He just couldn't get over it. He couldn't let it go because it was built in his occult DNA. So he was a part of paranormal society. So when Holmes was created in 1887, he based that off of physician Wendell Holmes, who did everything by logic and his mentor, Dr. Joseph Bell. So when he was writing things, he would always put some occult fingerprints, as so to speak, in his work. One of them was the Land of Mist, where he writes, and I'm paraphrasing, that there was a Baphometic figure and Elisif's Levi, author of Transcendental Magic, is his prophet. End quote. So they tell you things about Holmes, but they don't go into how... There was based on a lot of occult stuff because that is what Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was. He was an occultist. He was inspired also by the Gnostic Edgar Allan Poe and another Freemason, Harry Houdini, the illusionist. Even though they had broke apart, it's kind of like with what happened with Anton LaVey and Michael Aquino. Michael Aquino was a so-called theistic Satanist and Anton LaVey was getting away from that where he thought it was all about hedonism and that's just, Satan's just emanating from your mind. 
Sorry, LaVey, you got that terribly wrong. But um, that's neither here or there. So there was a particular thing that happened in 1929 in Russia. Because Russia has occultists. One of them was Rasputin, the Mad Monk. So Arthur Conan Doyle, his stuff was banned in Russia in 1929. They're like, mm -mm, we done seen this movie before. Your stuff will not be making the cut here. And if you want to see something that's very good, because if you see the old movies about, you know, Sherlock Holmes, and I've seen pretty much all of them, Watson was supposed to be this bumbling idiot, but he wasn't that. And that's why I like the latter depictions of him, because they needed the balance. One was spiritual. That was Watson. And he was trained as a doctor. And then you had the detective. So they had to have the balance. So if you want to see something, I would highly recommend that you see the latter depiction of Sherlock Holmes with Robert Downey Jr. as Sherlock. And Holmes is betrayed by Judd Law. And this deals with an occult aspect. So I highly recommend that you see that movie because I know last time I checked, Netflix had it. But there was a whole lot going on with Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And that's why it led to the creation of Holmes. Because that serves somewhat as an alter ego of him trying to understand where do you go. Well, nothing in life makes total sense. And I think that's the biggest problem that people got in the West, especially America and the United Kingdom. Everything has to fit in this box. And that's the impossibility. It's nothing is ever totally going to fit. If you can get 55 or 60 percent of the truth, you're really on to something. And another lesson is when you are in a cultist, you have to have an outlet, especially if you are an empath or artist like his uncle and his father was. And they couldn't handle it back then. So find something, whether it be sports, cooking, writing, but find an outlet because the further that you go on this path, yes, it can it can drive you to mental instability if you're not careful. But that's the occult origins of Sherlock Holmes. If you got, you cannot understand him without understanding the writer and the mind behind that, because that's what he was doing back then. So he had friends that were occultists because when you're in the cultist, you can't be what I'm gonna be a friend with a, a, a mouth breather. That's no, it's no, I can't. I'm on this journey. So Sherlock Holmes creation of an occultist. And look at it like this. Who you have portraying Dr. Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch. Before he was Dr. Stephen Strange, he had portrayed Sherlock Holmes as well. Something to think about. So with that, that is your meat and potato sorcery for the day. I am the Water Alchemist. Be water, my friends. Peace.